Have you had your daily dose of bacteria? Whether you like it or not, you consume millions of bacteria every day. Our environmental exposures cultivate our microbiome, the trillions of microbes that live with us and help keep us healthy. These days, we're intentionally eating bacteria through probiotics. The first intentional consumption of microbes was promoted by Nobel laureate Ilya Mechnikov, who advocated drinking soured milk like the long-lived Bulgarian peasants. This fermented milk contained lactic acid-producing bacteria. Mechnikov hypothesized that these beneficial bacteria could outcompete the harmful bugs. And thus, the field of probiotics was born. Since then, there's been a bunch of research and an explosion in probiotic supplements. They're marketed towards everyone to support immune health and maintain digestive balance, and claim to treat conditions like inflammatory bowel disease and diabetes. But where does the research stand today on probiotics? Let's science it. Hey, welcome to Nourishable, I'm Dr. Lara. In order to understand why we would want to intentionally eat microbes, we first need to take a dive into the microbiome. The microbiome comprises the hundred trillion of microbes that live around our body. In the mouth, nose, armpit, skin, vagina if you have one, with most of the research focused on the gut microbiome. There is an intimate relationship between these microbes and our health. Science is still early in characterizing a healthy microbiome, but the best evidence we have is the greater the microbe diversity, the healthier the microbiome. Check out my microbiome episode here. So we know the microbiome is important. Now how can we manipulate the microbiome for optimal health? This is where probiotics come in. The word probiotic is Greek, meaning for life. This term was coined by Ferdinand Virgin in the 1950s, who was studying the negative impact of antibiotics on gut bacteria. The World Health Organization defines a probiotic as live microorganisms which, when administered in adequate amounts, confer a health benefit on the host. So a probiotic is a particular strain or combo of strains that are delivered at a specified dose that affects some measurable health outcome. Many of the probiotic strains used today are in the lactobacillus or bifidobacterium families. Currently, probiotics come in the form of pills and powders. I'm diving into fermented foods in other episodes. How do probiotics work? We don't know for sure, but we have a few theories. First, these microbes need to make it down into the intestine alive. So they have to be alive when we eat them, and they have to survive all the acid and enzymes that they're bombarded with down the GI tract. Once there, these beneficial microbes could compete for residence on the lining of the intestine, release substances that antagonize pathogenic bacteria, inhibit the release of toxins from bad bugs, or help regulate the host's immune system. Many probiotic bacteria produce acids that make the intestine more acidic. This promotes the growth of good bacteria and inhibits inflammatory bacteria. Other probiotic microbes can break down fiber in our food to produce metabolites called short-chain fatty acids. Think of these metabolites as micro poop. When the probiotics ferment fiber, they poop out short-chain fatty acids. These short-chain fatty acids can be used as energy by the intestinal cells and act as chemical signals that bolster the intestinal barrier and reduce inflammation. Who should take probiotics? The marketing makes us think that everyone should, with probiotic consumption doubling in the last decade. But what does the science say? Going back to our definition, we need to demonstrate that microbe supplementation is having a specific measurable health benefit. Probiotics have been investigated as a prophylactic measure to prevent a disease and as treatment for a specific condition. To dig into the gut microbiome, we're going to have to talk about poop. A lot. So we're going to play a fun game called How Many Poop Emojis Can We Fit in One Nourishable Episode? By compiling many studies together, there is a consensus that probiotics are effective for preventing and treating antibiotic-associated diarrhea, including from the particularly nasty bug C. diff. Although antibiotics are necessary to treat some infections, they wipe out much of the gut microbiome, creating a state of dysbiosis. This leaves open space for pathogenic microbes to colonize, frequently releasing diarrhea-inducing toxins in their wake. Probiotics are thought to improve the microbial balance during antibiotic treatment. There's also mounting evidence that probiotics can help treat bacterial vaginosis and recurrent abdominal pain of unknown origin in kids, aka tummy aches. There's lots of active research going on for other conditions, like gestational diabetes and ulcerative colitis, though right now the results are really mixed. 
so far these probiotics have been for specific populations with specific health conditions. But what about probiotics for healthy people to optimize wellness? There's early evidence that probiotics may reduce the risk of upper respiratory tract infections, or the common cold, and also shorten the duration of a cold. The research isn't very clear though on what particular strains or what dosages are best. Probiotics are mostly promoted for gut health. There have been a few studies in healthy people showing an increase in the number of bowel movements per week, reduced bloating, and improved poop consistency. Are probiotics safe? Probiotics are considered a dietary supplement rather than a drug by the FDA. This means that manufacturers don't need to provide evidence of safety or efficacy before selling their product. Some investigations have identified quality control issues with probiotic supplements, including contamination, lower amounts than stated on the package, and some containing only dead microbes. The question of safety has been controversial. While there aren't many reports of adverse events for healthy people, there have been case reports of at-risk populations getting sick from probiotics. Many physicians recommend that probiotic usage should be treated with caution if you're immunocompromised or critically ill. My nourishable conclusions are that there is mounting evidence for probiotics in specific contexts, like antibiotic-associated diarrhea. When looking at the data for healthy people, I'm not all that compelled to run out and buy probiotic supplements today for health optimization, because there's still so much we don't know about the different strains and dosages, plus I'm not all that confident in their regulation. For the time being, I'm going to focus on nourishing my microbiome through a fiber-rich diet of fruits, vegetables, whole grains and legumes, and fermented foods. Okay, not legumes for me because I'm allergic to them, but for most people they're very healthy. If you're interested in exploring probiotics because, say, you get colds all the time, talk to your personal physician for individualized advice. There's so much active research going on that I anticipate that these conclusions will continue to evolve over the next several years. So stay tuned for updates. That's what science tastes like. Thanks for tuning in to Nourishable. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all things nutrition.